Powell, ladies and gentlemen, owner of the Utah Jazz, self-made billionaire, very important, Ryan Smith. Yeah. Hey, you're super cool, dude. Yeah, I like, you guys left me out at the gate. I couldn't even get in, so I just jumped your gate. No, no, oh. no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. Now, everybody, it's all hands on deck whenever the show starts, and you were arriving at the same time we were there. We apologize for that. No, we appreciate cool. you coming in and hanging with Big J and for making the time. Utah Jazz playing the Pacers tonight. Big yep, one. We're here. How's the team? We're, we're figuring it out. Okay. I mean, it's early. It's we're we're starting. Um, we got some new pieces, and we're trying to figure out how to gel. We got a ways to go, but we got Coach Will Hardy. Got some smart people around. We got some good pieces. We just got to we gotta power through it. Let's coach, uh, talk about Coach Will Hardy. He's like uh, 24 years old. 22 no, he's 35. 35. Well, okay. He's well, a very young man. Yeah, got, he's, like it. he's got a baby face. I got a chance yeah. to see him. Uh, where did you guys find him, and why was he the guy that was hired to lead your team as a new owner three years into this thing? Yeah, so so we came in. Um, we, we had a little bit of a, a – we're kind of starting over. We're really trying to create a championship and, and go for it. I brought Danny Ainge in. Um, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. He's pretty good at what he does. Dog. Um, Ainge came in. We started a, a coaching search. We went through a whole long list of process. Will was definitely the youngest. Had never been a head coach before, but was with Popovich for about 11 years. Was in Boston for a year. And um, we just, there's just something about Will. He's just got he's a connection. Awesome. He's awesome. He's a great coach. And he's going to be he's just getting better and better, and um, we love him. You talk about rebuilding your team. You brought in Danny Ainge uh, from, I believe, Boston uh, is where Hell yeah. Danny Ainge uh, came from. Legend. He has massive brain. You hear him talk about just genius. Yeah, That's what everybody in the basketball world says. The whole reason the Celtics are good right now is because of the moves Danny Ainge made after Paul Pierce and Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett and getting them out. So I assume that was a massive strategy move for you to bring Danny Ainge in. Why did you bring him in, and how did that relationship start? I mean, we were close. He's someone that I always kind of gelled with. Um, I would talk with him about the NBA. I had never thought that I would be in a position where we would have a team, let alone be able to work with him. And first and foremost, like we're friends and we like to hang out together. And to be able to do it, if you were going to do a team with someone that you trust and trust you, and he can talk to me. And I think that's a big part of the NBA. A lot of people, I think, get in my position and think they know. Um, but he's able to communicate with me. He's able to talk me off the ledge. He's able to, to, to ration, rationalize with me. And I think, that's, I think that's a big part of it. And so I believe in kind of the team aspect of this. There's really no extra points for going alone. So I want to surround myself with the best people we can. And when you've got a guy like that who's willing to, you know, come in and, and work and we work together on it. I mean, I talked to him on the way here just kind of going through what he's seeing. He's, you know, a G League practice right now. He's a total junkie. <clears throat> Yeah, and he did a great job with Boston. Yeah. Uh, and whenever you guys decided to redo the program, pretty much, trade away Rudy Gobert. Yep. Who else? You Donovan tried? Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. And this is you as a young owner, 44 years old, right? Youngest in the league? Uh, at the time, yeah. So, oh, no longer the youngest? Who came in? I think I think Matt and I are pretty close to the same age. But Matt. Ishbia in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rocket Mortgage. Yeah. Is that his thing? He went no, to that terrible that's, school. That's, that's the other. That's Dan Rocket Gilbert. Rocket Dan Gilbert. Uh, oh, that's the Michigan, the Michigan State. State. Well, Both Michigan State. Oh, sorry. What's the other one? What's his? What's Ishbia's? It's, uh... I'm blanking. Oh, no. Uh, no. Go that guy went to Michigan State. Oh, what a pig. You're a bad guy. Ishbia gave a lot of money up there. He did. Oh, but his basketball team, the Rocket Mortgage Michigan State men's basketball team lost. Oh, yeah, James Madison. Yeah. Yeah, probably a smart move going to Phoenix Suns. College basketball not as easy as it once was for Michigan State. United Wholesale Mortgage. Another, Yeah, just another mortgage. Yeah, we yeah. love it. We love everything about it. But anyways, whenever you go in there, you were a kid. You grew up in Utah, right? Mm -hmm. Fan of the Utah Jazz. Die hard growing up. I think you told me you used to break into the building to watch Utah Jazz. Yeah, I mean, during the last dance, I remember not having quite enough money to get in, but I figured <laughs> yeah. out how to get in. Yeah, and that was whenever your coach was saying things to Michael Jordan at restaurants the night before? Yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion that was happening between Michael Jordan and the Jazz fans that year, I remember, whether it's <laughs> nice. pizza, getting sick, oh, and yeah. wanting to go to Vegas, like whatever it was, but... Um, the Wi-Fi in the buildings, Jordan pushed off, so I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you grow up a fan of the team. Yeah. So then you get in a position where you can buy the team. 
and own the team. You and your wife buy the team three yep. years ago. All-star game coming to town, and you decide to trade away the two biggest stars and say, hey, we're going to rebuild this whole thing. I assume at the time was frowned upon by Jazz fans, NBA, or how have the Jazz fans been with you being the owner? Because it's sold. When we were there, the yeah, place was electric. Mm -hmm. How do they feel about you being the owner and also those moves early? How was it received? Yeah, so it's probably not the ideal start you want to do when you kind of draw it up and you're coming in and you're saying, hey, like we're in the middle of something. Um, you're seeing a lot of teams right now that are going all in. I mean, I think in the West, we've got seven or eight teams who are literally going all in on their, on their franchises and they're making decisions that, you know, they're really taking assets from the future and pushing them in right now. And, you know, kind of tomorrow always comes, mm -hmm. right? Um, we were at the tail end of that with Donovan and Rudy and everything. And um, we just kind of had a chance where it felt like we needed to retool a bit to be able to to go, and we had a couple teams look at um, offering some pretty big packages and coming off where it would have set us up for a future, maybe try to open up another championship window. We got together with Danny and Justin and said, hey, this is a really good good opportunity, and so we're going to do it. So I think starting out, that's it. Um, our fans are incredible. Great. I mean, Utah fans are absolutely incredible. I think we have 251 straight sellouts. The Jazz are, are really the That's pinnacle that kind of brings everyone together in Utah. What do you mean? Just is, 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 I mean, if you take a step back, I mean, Utah's the fastest growing market in the country. It's wow. youngest um, population in the country. It's the number one economy with the lowest unemployment. And so it's something that everyone can come in. It's like you come in, you're a Jazz fan, we're coming in together, and we really kind of host out from the jazz for, for the state. And, you know, you guys come in, and it's a, it's a prime example. You can it was awesome. Game and it was that's, so That's fun. part of it. He was sitting next to Dwayne Wade for four yep. quarters. Yeah, I didn't even see him until I sat down, too. So when I did sit down, I was Did you learn anything? Yeah, of course. I mean, I know so much stuff now about basketball <laughs> that I didn't before, naturally by sitting next to him. Go ahead, D-Bot. That's actually who I wanted to ask you about. I've uh, been a lifelong, pretty much, um, Miami Heat fan. Obviously, he's the greatest Heat player of all time. Thought he would be a part of that ownership group. He's over there with you in Utah. What's it been like working working with Dwayne, and uh, have you given any input as far as the team? What's that been like working with Flash? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, he's one of one, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, even even if just the first day he walked into the arena's part after our press conference, the entire arena was like on their feet for Dwayne. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Someone who competes that hard for that long wins at that level to be able to walk in and have everyone on their feet. Mm -hmm. um, phenomenal business, um, phenomenal businessman, um, great partner, understands teamwork with incredible championship DNA. So if you look at what we're doing in Utah, Danny, Dwayne, there's a lot of rings between those guys. Mm -hmm. um, Why you know, Dwayne, though? How, was there a thought that you needed a player, you wanted a player? Or no, if, I think it was you're... more of just I've always been a believer that you put the smartest people around that you can, and, um, you know, it's, it's what you try to do here, yeah, right? Absolutely. You're going, you're going, yeah. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, it, Ryan. I've never heard something more true. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're really oh. trying to build a team and, and go at it. And we got um, anytime you can get Dwayne Wade on your team, you do it. 44 years old, owner of the Jazz. Self-made, I said that. What was your company? Qualtrics. Qualtrics. Which was... So Qualtrics is... is still a company. Still a company. Great right company. Oh, hey, yeah. right. still doing it. Still, still around. Still doing it. 22 years ago, started in the basement of parents' house, and um, it's really the ability to help companies and organizations look at their businesses and their companies from the outside in. So you're grabbing feedback, whether you're flying on an airline, whether you're... Um, judging the experience of fans, how, how are they taking it, and then you operate your business. So you guys started kind of on the internet, the pod world. Boom. You can see it take off. You can see, see the feedback in real time as it's coming in. A lot of businesses can't do that, and so that's what we're helping them do. Oh, nice. For 22 years you've been in that game? Yeah, man. It's been a long time. You must have done pretty good to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, you, you're, well, doing, you're giving good feedback. You're it's, giving good information. That's, that's what it's about. Have you been able to utilize anything you use from that to now ownership of the Utah Jazz, and is this full-time for you now? Is this what you do? Yeah, Smith Entertainment Group, which is kind of the entity that we created that owns the Delta Center and owns part of Real Salt Lake. Um, just had a big win the other night. Oh, Olympics yeah. Olympics coming into the playoffs. So we go to Houston uh, I Sunday, I believe, or Thursday. Sunday, I don't your folks, we got the, we got the Pacers today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jazz got we're the Pacers. Yeah, what's next? What's we're next? we're going and uh, and it's a winner take all for that. Um, 
And so our sports entity is, is taking a lot of time, but I also still chairman of Qualtrics and I love that business. I think we're helping people solve a lot of really good problems out there and everyone needs it. Um, we live in an experience economy. People want that experience. It's, it's something that in business is not disrupted. You won't disrupt experiences. And um, it's, been a, it's been a big part of my life and what we do, and it's pretty crazy. To You're an American Dream story, Ryan. You need to know that. I told you that whenever I was talking to you while you were wearing sweet joggers, uh -huh. six shoes, <laughs> and a cool backwards hat. I was like, hey, I didn't know much about you before today, but I've Googled you, and after talking to you, you're an inspiration. You're an American dream. Yeah. You are an American dream Sick. story, Ron. And I had no idea you existed. I had no clue. So I'm very happy I've learned of you. And also, I think the world's better that you're in it. Uh, AJ has a question for you on the screen. Yeah, Ron, appreciate you being here. I, I assume my premium seats are, are what you guys are always trying to add and in, in add into you know, these arenas. When you watch a game, you see people basically sitting on the bench with the coaches and the players in the NBA game. You see some players usually in the sitting in the back on the floor, stretching their back because we sell all these seats. Are there any areas of the arena that we can, there's even like a better fan experience where you're looking into figuring out where we can sit? I mean, look, we took over an arena that's always been sold out and we're trying to figure out like what is the futuristic game experience? I think the way we host is completely different inside arenas. So for example, in our arena, we built all of these bunker suites where actually it's very similar to soccer if you've been to a Premier League game where you go and you eat and then you come out. Um, I think the, the floor seats, like if you go into like the Warriors arena, it's crazy. Like there are people sitting next to Steph on the side of the bench there. And it's, it's bizarre. He comes and sits down and the fans' eyes are just... Mm -hmm. We were in L.A. I was talking to Chris Paul. Chris yeah. Paul was like two feet away from me. He was just yeah. in the game for the Suns or whatever. I'm like, I'm way too close. Yeah. I actually thought that to myself. I, it was it was April 20th in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. So, I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, I'm potentially elevated. Like what? Was that? Was that no, little, just you were, you were feeling it. Yeah, you were feeling the electricity in the air. I might be elevated. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because it was such a good day. Such a great day. It was mm -hmm. a good day. Great we were day. celebrating Beautiful. the day. Summer Fortunately, shining. it was a great one. But I, I was like sitting within hand reach of Chris Paul. And I was like, I'm way too close. <laughs> Why is this allowed? But that's kind of the NBA, I think. Well, I mean, you were like pretty much a bench coach the other night. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I actually think you referred to yourself as one of the coaches. And arguably versus the Clippers, you might have had a little bit to do with our victory. Come on. Hell yeah. the, Ke the Kelly Olenek, I mean. That was real deal. That was real. That was real. And so that's the experience. I mean, we're trying to provide an experience. If you think about an NBA team, we're truly a media company. Similarly here, where you've got, you've got talent that's on the floor, you've got a distribution channel, and you've got this live experience that people can be a part of. And there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. When you're sitting down there, you're sitting close, and we're just trying to deliver that experience all the way up to anyone in the arena. And then now with what we're doing with streaming, um, you know, we cut our own cord in Utah, which is kind of crazy, mm. a little controversial, but um, we've taken that and trying to deliver that same experience, AJ, to everyone, no matter where they're at for, for our team in this brand. A little controversial. You got some help for that, I assume? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. I mean, look. Yeah. You know, I come, I come from Sounds a world. Like this is, you asked one of the things with Qualtrics. I come from a world where if you deliver a good experience, the rest takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Boom. Got it. And we business. were providing a, a media situation where we were only showing our games to 1.2 of the 3.3 million people in Utah. And it was very much, this is the experience you're going to get. Anything outside of that, you can't track it. So we cut the cord. We basically signed five new media deals where we went over air free for 3.3 million people. Wow. We did streaming. We're now up to 16,000 people who are streaming. Nice. Uh, Let's go. With, with, with about, in Utah. you know, I would say, you know, well north of 50% of them are tuning into every game. We're creating new content. Our coach and the organization have been incredible to bring that through. And then we also bought our rights outside of Utah. So we're going to Idaho, Wyoming, Washington, and delivering games up there and delivering it in two or three different ways. So wherever you are and however you consume, that there's a way that you can find our games. We want to take all friction out of watching our games. We're truly in the eyeball business now. And now we're saying, okay, we'll get broad reach. And we think we've we pretty much 5X'd our market size. 
Yeah, and that'll, that'll do. Yeah, that'll yeah. do for merch. That'll do for team building. And also the guys that you have on your team are awesome. We talk about Kelly Olenek. He was so cool that entire evening. But the way you guys played in that particular game, I've only seen you guys play one time. Most electrifying basketball game I've ever been a part of. So mm -hmm. I assume. Well, I mean, you were a big part of it. Well, I was in there. I mean, I felt like I was in that game. I literally did, and I was pulling so hard for you. Can't wait to watch tonight, huh? Let's oh. go, Jazz. Here we go. Let's go, Jazz. Playing the Pacers. That's going to be tough. A lot of Indiana people are going to be very disappointed with me, but I want to let you know. I'm on. What do you want? I coach the Jazz. Got the what jersey. Do? Oh, there's the video proof. I coach the Jazz. How do the other NBA owners feel about you whenever you do stuff like this? And what is the process of talking to other NBA owners when you try to get things passed? For instance, this new in-season uh, mega yep. bowl mm -hmm. uh, that we're having, this new in-season tournament, new courts, new everything. How does that get passed? And how do the ownership feel about it? Is there a lot of old mindset in the NBA, new mindset? How is that whole process of developing and growing the NBA? So one of the things that I love about being part of the league is how innovative we are. I mean, since I've been there, and just like if you look at three years, we did a playing tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was for Zion, right? For Zion. Yeah. Did that for Zion. Yeah, yeah. We, did, did for Zion. We, we did a playing tournament. That was for Zion Williamson. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We, 100%. We, we, we saw it. He's out for personal reasons tonight. <laughs> okay. He's tired. And uh, uh, hopefully he gets, he's out. Yeah. Again? And, and that's it. That's Whoa, the end of the year. He's working on it. And I think that's working really well. I think if you look at the end season tournament, these are, these are new disruptive ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and I would argue that, you know, there's a lot of other leagues that, need to follow suit on trying to figure out how to disrupt themselves a little bit to innovate towards media, landscape, consumption, and where this is going and fan experience. Um, we're going to see how it goes. It's always never as good the first time you do it as the second or the third. But if you look at that play-in tournament at the end of the year where you've got multiple teams that are really coming down, they're playing one game to get in the playoffs, the Heat come in, they go all the way. That's in year like two, and you're starting to see the success of that. I think you're seeing a lot more attention on what's going on, you know, in two nights for this kickoff of this yeah, it's mega season ball. tournament. Yeah, yeah. it's in mega some way, with the new courts. I mean, I can see New Jersey's. You see it go down. But kudos to Adam and and everyone in that room, whether they're old or they're young, they're willing to disrupt the past to innovate for the future. And that's what the coolest part of being part of that group is. Yeah. Is you're starting to see that a lot. It's not like that everywhere, especially yeah. if there's been, had success. And they talk about the NBA TV ratings all the time. You guys own digital. You guys own social. Like X, whenever NBA's have, that's where I watch a lot of yep. NBA is on X. I watch a lot on Instagram, on highlights. I assume TikTok is a massive NBA platform. Have you guys figured out how to profit off of that? Have you figured out how to become like the digital sport? Because... I feel like that is something that doesn't get talked about. If you guys were to drop ads, by the way, in the middle of highlights, oh, man. and then those get clipped and then sent out, now we're taking care of the digital stuff, Ryan. You know what I mean? Has that been something you guys have to prepare for? And do you expect and continue growth digital-wise for the entire league? Well, when I, when I came into the league, I'll never forget, Adam called and said, hey, like everything you've learned in tech, don't check it at the door. Like we want that as part of our group. It's, Ooh, it's encouraged. I think probably the most exciting part about the league is what we've done on the global level. And I don't think we begin to harvest. It's much more a brand building. You know, everything you got is for the brand. If you actually think yeah, about. Yeah, new store, by the way. Yeah, yeah, up shout out. Show .com. <laughs> I'm just pitching it. Uh, the, Thank you. 15% uh, off all week. Okay. <laughs> but like everything that, that we're, we're seeing is this global game. I mean, I was in Croatia over the summer, and there were cities where basketball was everything. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't football, it wasn't soccer. It was like, it was just basketball. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy cow. But then you look at it, and it's like, well, Luka's an hour away, and Jokic is not that far away. Like, it, and you're starting to see this movement of basketball globally, NBA Africa. Um, it's, it's pretty impactful if you think and you just actually project out where the NBA can be. I'm pretty bullish on this league. Yeah, great sport. Continuing to grow. You got Wemby, right? Yeah, right. Huge. You got the Greek freak. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Joker, obviously, you said. Luca, you said. And I assume there's somebody else from some. Hey, yeah. Markin. Yeah. Markin is yeah. a beast. What, he went and served and he just came back and just. Two months. Yeah. He went and did his military work. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and they came back and just started draining threes. Yeah, I mean, he's seven footer. I think he's, he's taken the third most threes in the league with the. Third most accuracy, which is pretty crazy. Pretty good. That'll play. Seven pretty good, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Not pretty bad. good. Connor has a question for you about Utah. Yeah, tell uh, Danny to send Lori back to Boston. <laughs> but with uh, Utah, obviously you guys had those two 
you know, major players with Rudy and Donovan and, you know, stuff happened between those two. And then Rudy gave like 50 reporters COVID. So like things happened like that. Yeah. Was that a your, that was your place where he did the, yeah. the fingies? Yeah. The COVID fingies? Yeah. That was Whoa. Ryan, Nobody knew. Oh. Ryan told him to, I think. Oh. Did you? I wasn't, I wasn't involved at that time. This okay. was prior to my time. <laughs> oh, that's I came why he got the COVID, yeah, smart. Post bubble, like this is body genius. Okay, you, but so you did in. see it though. You were a fan of the jazz. You saw the COVID Ooh. fingies. Yeah. I mean, Home it week. actually shows you the power of the league like the league shut down that day and it almost felt like the world shut down oh yeah as well. oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. nobody that, is, that was a moment <laughs> <laughs> it was in an nba game where they're like uh everybody needs to get out of the arena please do not panic but you need to get out of here immediately <laughs> <laughs> you heard an actual lady yell the jazz were part of that game no they were part of that game. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> Crazy. You weren't the owner at the time. Right? No. I wasn't. So, so they're a much different situation. But one of the things with the NBA is like Cheech and Chong are getting $100 million contracts. And you're an owner, so you're paying these contracts. How does that conversation go with the other owners? Because obviously there's the escalators with the all-NBA teams and everything. And you want your guys to do well. But if they don't make an all-NBA team, they're not getting $300 million. How, how does that kind of be scaled when you guys are figuring that out, whether it's the length of time with the team, obviously the awards, which change now with the 65 game rule in order to get those awards. Are you guys talking to each other like, okay, we should pay these guys upwards of 300 million? Because I mean, now a lot of players are going to come into the NBA and then leave the NBA as billionaires because of how, how much money there are. No, it's a beautiful world, right? Yeah, for them. <laughs> no, for all I think, parties. I think yeah. for everyone. Like, I, I think um, from an ownership, I don't think you've ever had an ownership groups within the NBA that are so motivated to win. Like, mm -hmm. the competitiveness between us is at a level where you've got owners saying, hey, we're going to take it right to the max. We're going to spend as much as we can. Um, there's something invigorating about some of these markets, they, they literally need to be on heaters to fill that up and to fill what you guys felt the other night. Oh, that was awesome. I mean, playoff basketball is something that's, that's pretty invigorating. Um, but at the same time, we're all partners. And I think we just went through the CBA with the players. It was, it was pretty harmonious if you actually think about going through that together. And it's, nothing's ever perfect, and you're tweaking and you're tweaking. But I think everyone on both sides feels like, um, look, the brand's in a really good spot. And – and we're moving together and we're going to we're going to be partners in the meetings and off the court I, I'll talk to different folks about TV or other things from different teams all the time but that night when we're facing each other we want to destroy each other yeah hell and that's, yeah, absolutely. that's that's how it that's how it goes and and if someone can get a competitive advantage by signing a player and the other thing is you never know you never know that when you sign this individual or you don't sign someone how it's going to go because you've seen people go off to a next team. I mean, Lowry's a great example of that. I mean, mm. we got Lowry marketing in the Donovan trade, and, I mean, look, look what he's done. I mean, you yeah. would have thought that um, hosting the All-Star game before that and then to have – Lowry the next year starting in the All-Star game, which you guys are going to have here in Indiana. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. This upcoming right. offseason. This mm -hmm. offseason. So, so uh, you Halliburton don't always started. know. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a perfect science, but um, – Typically, I think those awards and the system there is like if someone can go and compete and in their position rise to the top, it's normally a, a much safer bet. Are you in those negotiations there? Because he said Cheech and Chong, and I didn't know if he was just talking about you guys not testing for weed, which is sweet. And yeah, awesome. uh, I do appreciate you guys doing that, talking about trailblazing sure. Utah. and what other leagues need to do. Shout out to Utah, too, and Indiana. And congrats, Ohio. Yeah, congrats shout out. Ohio just Good yesterday. Work, AJ. Just yesterday. Cleveland Cavaliers are all clear. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? They can just walk right to the store. Buy their weed, smoke their weed, go play basketball. Yeah. Nobody cares. Donovan Mitchell. That's 2023. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. way to go. You did it. Welcome to the future. But whenever you're talking, we're not talking about just high guys. We're talking about like guy number nine or ten on the roster that we've never heard of before. And a deal gets announced in a free agency. It's like old. I won't say Joseph Smith, obviously, but like John <laughs> Smith. Uh, you know. Yeah. Sure. John Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Signed for ninety two million dollars or something like that. Are you a part of all those? How's that go? Danny Ainge handles it, and then owners are just kind of hands off. Because in the NFL, it's mostly GMs, mm -hmm. and then the owners are just paying the check pretty much. In the NBA, how involved are you, and what is the norm pretty much in those processes? Yeah, so so obviously Danny and Justin um, and Coach are, you know, typically if they're coming in with a good idea and something they want to do, it's pretty hard for me to say, oh no, I'm not gonna back that right 
Um, that would be sweet. You said, Danny, yeah. you're wrong. You don't know anything. Yeah, yeah I, I've got my own draft board. You keep your <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, like, I, I think that, you know, it's, it, it's pretty much kind of math, and you've got so many pieces of the pizza as far as allocation of salary that you can have, and if someone comes in on a max deal, they're going to take three to four slices of your mm-hmm. tin. And then there's rules in place of what you can do. I think fans a lot of times think, oh, I can just reach up and grab that person. Well, you've got to match salaries now with the new CBA coming in next year where um, if you're over that second tier, you start losing draft picks if you're there and it's hard to get out. And so a lot, it's a little more complicated, um, but we have a whole group of people sitting in the back room that are sitting in their computers and they're running financial models and analysis and rules and understanding the CBA and you've got chat GPT that's got the CBA in it. You can type oh, in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, tag team it's, it's all, it's all there. Um, and you know, I think you've, you've got to, you've got to get lucky timings, everything. Um, so if you have really good young players and you're growing part of your talent, then you can attract some free agents. So the mix that you have, is really important as these championship windows open up. So if you look in the league, there's a lot of teams who are who are right there, but they don't have the youth, so ultimately that's going to spin out. Um, or you've got teams that have a couple young stars who are still on a smaller contract, and then they can reach up and go grab some of the old. So it's, it's all part of the balance, and this is why you surround yourself with super smart people and say, hey, you know, I like your idea, but you got blind spots here, here, and here, and this is this is what we do. Similar to the NFL, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of similar to the NFL. Like Ty has a question for you. Speaking of like the free agents, you mentioned how Utah is one of the fastest growing markets right now, and I think when we were out there, it was the first time any of us had been out there, but it was incredible. I mean, yep. it was awesome, and I feel like it's something that people don't really know about. But you also mentioned how like seven teams in the West right now are kind of going all in, and even though Utah is growing, you guys are obviously still a small market. In terms of like free agency, how do you battle like the two LA teams and you know the Warriors and the Suns and all these other and you know even in the East the Knicks and and teams like that? How do you battle with those massive market teams who stars kind of seemingly always want to gravitate towards? Like, is that something you guys have to be very conscious about moving forward? Obviously, with some of the trades you've had, you're going to get a lot of draft picks, so you know homegrown talent is going to be you know paramount going forward, but. How, how much do you kind of need to balance, like, oh, well, we want to try to be very aggressive in free agency, trying to convince these guys to come out to Salt, Salt Lake City and kind of growing your team within the draft and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's a really good question because it's, um, it's, it's everything on the court. I don't think it's, it's either. I mean, we have, the I think, the most first-round unprotected Hell picks. Hell of a play in, by Danny Hayden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. in, the, in the NBA going yeah. forward. So there is a big component of what we see about growing our talent. If you look at Donovan, he was drafted. If you look at Rudy, he was drafted. If you look at Darren Williams, mm-hmm. he was drafted. If you look at John and Carl, they were all drafted. And actually, if you actually go look around the league, there's a lot less big free agent movement than you would think if you actually go study that out. Um, and so that's got to be a core and then you've got to reach up and you've got to be able to go attract some free agents. I mean, one of our big things is I don't believe Utah's a small market. There is nothing that we have in common with other small markets. I mean, you can get on a plane and go right to London, uh, Amsterdam, Paris. Um, we've got, I think, the third best tech ecosystem. Um, everyone who came out from All-Star kind of saw that. I mean, what we normally get knocked for is nightlife. Right, but during All Star, we stood up. Oh, that caffeine is ice cold. <laughs> yeah. what, like, like we, in All Star, we stood up nightlife in like two weeks. It wasn't hard at all. Standing up a tech ecosystem, that's hard. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's like really, really hard. And we got seven million people that come in there. Um, and I already talked about the youngest demographic, number one economy. It's just going to get better. You're betting on youth, that much youth inside your state. It's unbelievable. And so, part of this is just showing it. People coming out. Everyone who comes out to Utah has a similar experience. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I didn't meet one person who came out from All-Star that wasn't like, dang, that was amazing. Like, I got to be it's out here more. It's, it's good. It's good unreal. For, and it's wellness. Like, I think people want to get out more right now, and they come out, and it's just like, even when you fly in there, you're looking around, you're going, this is epic. Yeah. And so um, now people can work there, and if their first job doesn't work out, the second job is right there in that same location. And plus, people... People want to be around families. They want to spread out a little bit more, and um, that's that's why people are moving there. We don't we don't need more people in Utah. We just need to highlight what's going on mm-hmm. there, and um, that's our job. 
That's our job. Um, a good chance the Olympics are coming back there. Ooh. Um, these are these is that breaking are, these news? Are moments. No? Is that breaking news? I think it's pretty clear that you know 30, 34 is looking looking pretty they sharp did. for oh. you. Oh, yeah, well, we didn't know that. Go ahead yeah. and pull yeah. on yeah. the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Kidding me? Hey, awesome. It's not done until it's good done, work. but. We've got Gosh, great. Sounds like we've, got, we've got it's great people in Utah. They're doing great job. And when the Olympics was there in 02, it was incredible. And so that's just another moment for the state, and and why we're so bullish on it. Speaking of, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, um, you talked about Real Salt Lake, and then obviously you have the Jazz. Um, is that the end goal, or is there a goal to you want to be like a Stan Kroenke that owns five teams? Or do you, are you looking at other sports leagues? How what's the future look like for you? So it's it's definitely not the end goal, and that's yeah. not where it's going to stop. <laughs> um, you know, I've I've talked to Gary a bunch. There's no secret about. Um, how hockey would do there, you know. I mean, you've got to go right there. Hell yeah, right? Hockey's uh, awesome. Winter sport, you can you can see it. I think um, most of the other winter sports train in Utah. Yeah. Um, for for Olympics, so that's a that's a big thing. Um, and and it, you know, at Smith Entertainment Group, we're we're open to all of it. I mean, we want to be a part of everything Utah. A lot of a lot of people I know are in my spot are okay going, you know, Premier League somewhere else. I am all about Utah. Like, I want to do sports. It's something we're in, but I want to do it in Utah because I believe in what's happening there and where this is going. And you're all going to kind of remember this conversation mm -hmm. and be like, oh, oh, I remember yeah. we were talking about that 10 years ago. Like, <laughs> holy cow, look at what's happened there. That guy with that backwards hat, really cool. We've been to Utah because the Utah Utes. Love Isn't that why we're out there? Yeah, yeah. it is. Fair Utah team. Utes. Mm -hmm. They were just awesome. They were They're the best. Uh, yeah, how many sellouts did they have straight there? I think they had uh, 82, yeah. 83. 82, yeah. straight the out. Utah Pretty, Utes. They yeah. were they awesome. Can ride. 6 a.m. Yeah, 6 they, they were all out there. Yeah, going Coach Winningham came in on a Harley, right? Yes, oh, yeah. they was. Yep. Yeah. They were awesome. like you. He was matching you up. Boom. And now he did beat me in an arm wrestling match, but he wouldn't take his shirt off True. So, in front of the true. crowd. So, really so we don't know if the football gods punished him for that that particular game. That, that's not an easy place to play at all. Utah Utes fans are fantastic. They were saying some stuff about another school in Utah, though. though that, weren't they? That, oh, yeah. yeah. The, oh, yeah. The, the we're not quiet about you. Yeah, yeah. Bring, yeah. Brigham Young University, I believe is what they were saying. They were saying a word that we're not allowed to say J.J. Watt always says on this show, BYU. By the way, do you know what it's like? I, I played in the summer. I played J.J. in pickleball. Trying to get a ball around J.J.? Impossible. It's impossible. Just kind of it, a low-key drop there, too. Yeah, we we get to just play pickleball with J.J. No. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I, I, I'm, actually, oh, I'm actually challenging him because this has got to be a thing. He's gotten a lot better, but... It's not a it's not a fair it's not a fair fight. Where at? Where yeah, what you guys do? Is this some We just meet up. We just meet up. We're pickleball guys. So where is this a billionaire club somewhere? No, yeah. It's not a billionaire you club. You guys yeah, own a sports team. He owns Burnley. Team too. Yeah, Burnley? Yeah. Burnley? I like what he's doing with that, but they they're so They're, not they're not very so good. bad. Yeah. yeah. You talk to so he, bad. We've been following along with maybe too close. A little yeah. too close. Maybe too close. Is that is are you nudging him on that? Yeah, all, every uh, show. Yeah. They can't win a game, Ryan. That's our soccer expert back there, Gumpy. He was sitting next to me. Yeah, the Burnley team kind of stinks. But uh, ownership's awesome. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, the Burnley owner, J.J. Watt. Yeah. <laughs> J.J. What? J.J., you're okay. back on. J.J. Okay. 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 Bro, uh, I didn't know they were coming at Burnley so hard, everybody, man. Everybody calm down. <laughs> I walk in and I hear a lot of slander going on. No, we're just we're just, from I, one owner to another. Yeah, we're trying was, to give him. I was your... building up how hard it is to get a pickleball around you, bro. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I didn't hear that part. I just heard a lot of Burnley talking here. And well, I, I didn't know what I was hard. walking into on the Burnley side. I was saying you were doing a pretty good job with it and how you were repping it. Yeah, where do you and Ryan play pickleball you. at? You guys have some sports ownership group meetings that you guys all have together, group texts and things like that, JJ. Yeah. Ryan is a very good athlete. It's pretty impressive. Very good golfer, very good pickleball player, obviously good at basketball. Sneaky, sneaky good athlete. Where do you guys play? Uh, on pickleball courts. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. This is one of those secrets. Secret. Right. Thank you. Answer. Ladies and gentlemen, JJ Watt. <laughs> Thank you, JJ. Thank you, JJ. What, what type of weird shit you guys doing? Yeah, what the hell? In the summer, oh, that's summer? Right there. under the Denver airport you guys play? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, you love Utah. Love it. But it does feel like there's a potential um, two sides of Utah. The ones that wear the red, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking politics here, the ones that wear the red, and then the ones that wear the blue. And the blue would be BYU. Yes, sir. You're a BYU grad. I am. Oh. What happened against West Virginia this past week? It's tough. It wasn't, tough. It wasn't oh good. My it, was a rough, it was a rough suck. week. It was, a rough, it was bad. It was bad. Worse than Burnley.
Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. saying something. Yeah, it, it, it was it was tough. And and Pat, you texted me through that, and just not a good day for all of our <laughs> BYU guys and the BYU guys in the league. It was just they all heard it. Yeah. Oh, they all heard it. Yeah, I tried my best to relay the message to yeah. all of them because Kyle? that is something. <laughs> Kyle Van Noy certainly had sure. to experience that. <laughs> Austin Cawley had to experience that. Uh, who's the tight end from uh, P- Pitta? Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Pitta. Dennis Pitta back Great there. dude. There's a lot. Jaron Hall had a bad day. Who's yeah. Aaron Hall? Warner go to BYU. Who? Fred. No. Fred Warner. Yeah. Oh, Fred. Oh, yeah, he yeah, did. Fred Warner. Yep. Kurt. We got a lot. We got a lot of kids out there. Mormons are dogs, dude, in football. And why do you think Puka. that is? Why do you think the Mormons Puka. are all Puka's unbelievable? Mm-hmm. Dude. Why do you think the Mormons are all sneaky athletes? You heard what how JJ talked about you. It's like every Mormon I've met has basically looked the same. <laughs> Pretty much, all those guys look way. the exact same. <laughs> Pretty much, in a good way. I mean, kinda. You know, super handsome is yeah. pretty much yeah, all yeah, the yeah, very yeah. attractive yeah. the more but also very athletic it feels like why do you think the mormons have taken the sport so well um it's just it's just in the dna man i think uh normally a lot of us come from big families and that's just part of it it's what you do you play with your siblings you play with your friends um and you know you get out of the house and and roll i mean i think um for me you know i i didn't Play in the league or any of that, but you own it, watching you know. watching these watching these guys come out, whether it's Puka or you know a lot of them are playing multiple sports. Dennis Pitta, Taysom, like I mean, yeah, Chris Hogan. They, yeah, these guys are just they're just they they could go pro in a lot of different things. I mean, they're they're I mean, look at Ainge, right? I mean, yeah. three sports. Like, yep. like I think the discipline though is a big deal. I think obviously that is just something that's very natural for you guys. And I think people talk about any religion, whatever they whatever they do in a certain way. But the amount of discipline that Mormons have to showcase to remain in LDS, but then also you have to be a human. And I think that bodes well for sports. Like I think I've never met a Mormon that has been like so ridiculously out of touch. Now, Grant, I'm sure they exist. But all Mormons I've met with have been very cool, talking to me, not judgy at all about anything, very open, but also very disciplined. I think those are two very good things to have whenever it comes to sports. No, there's definitely a, a, a big mental side of sports, right? And you got to be pretty sharp to be able to to do it. And um, But, you know, there's a lot of Mormons who aren't good at sports either as well. Well, those are the... <laughs> I, haven't I haven't met them. I've only right. met the athletic well, ones. Uh, those are the Mormons that do the soaking, right? Because they're not yeah, focused geez. on sports the whole day. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That, right? That's Is that what, what you're talking about? Yeah, the bad ones. Well, the athletes are needed, though, for the earthquake part. Yeah, exactly, right. and that's why they're just locked in. Makes sense. Extra reps. If you guys believe this, I got some really good business ideas for you. What okay. are you talking about? <laughs> believe, believe what? what? <laughs> believe what? Will you <laughs> invest in them? Will you fund those business ideas? Hold on. Just real quick. <laughs> like a super soaker? <laughs> what don't you believe? You don't believe that there's... We definitely believe that there's somebody on the lower bunk. Yes. Mm-hmm. Going like this. I think that's ha- that's yeah that's real yeah nothing I'm not wrong that old, but yeah. I, I just, it wasn't around when I was in Kyle was one who told no us. no what Jeez. You, what, Kyle real? didn't tell you yeah yeah he did no. Kyle was soaking all over the yeah. place yeah call him they called him the super soaker <laughs> he might be in the middle of practice but yeah, he told you that but you couldn't get his shirt off or an arm wrestle well that was <laughs> that was Kyle Whittingham who also went to BYU didn't he yeah, yeah he's a he's a stud what an incredible coach yeah dog I think he's like top three four in the country. Oh, their team, they got killed last week. Yeah, they got a big did. one this week. Yeah, they got another one. And by, people are just kind of casting it off. I think we all forget they won 29 to 30 in there. Yeah. And then Oregon goes in and does their thing. Yeah, Washington, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's a huge, huge game. If Penix and Washington play anything like they played a couple weeks ago when they were sick, allegedly, is what I've been told. Yeah. Like that Utah team, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now representing the. Church of Latter Day Saints, uh, Kyle Van Noy. Hey, boy, Kyle. Hey, boy, Kyle. Oh, Kyle. In. hey hurry up. up! I gotta go to practice. What's up, hey, bro? I've been told. Okay, this guy said, "Don't believe it." When we talk about soaking and earthquake, oh, he said he did. This isn't real. He said this isn't real. Kyle, when we were in college, this was not a thing. I don't know what these young kids are up to, but that wasn't a thing when we were around. I feel you, Ryan. These kids are crazy these days, and it's a bunch of, bu- it's a bunch of bullshit. That- <laughs> Is pouring on to the fire. No! Oh, 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 oh. Hell yeah! Hey, I would never do that. Hey, it's good. It's good to see you, man. You too. I'm doing. I'm doing good. Are you doing good? Yeah, you look I'm, good. I'm doing great. You're, it's good to see you right where you're. Right where you're supposed to be. That's right. My man, thank you. Hey, it was just yesterday we were at the golf course talking. That's great. Yeah. Crazy. Hey, he has a hole in one. Do you see that? Who Kyle does? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of question marks. Yeah, some people don't a lot of people it. don't believe it. Mm-hmm. No, I believe it. He's an athlete. I, 
Kyle. Go. Single-handedly can win a game. All right, see you, Kyle. Go Thank practice, you. Kyle. So I don't know. Who else are late. you pulling up here? I mean, this is incredible. Well, that, all Col- this is allegedly illegal in the whole live TV thing. Oh, yeah. Because oh, we're right. just calling people out of nowhere. Yeah. Talk the bully. I'm curious to what? see who's coming on next. Hey, we're a big cold call show. Yeah. Like, we are yeah. a big cold call yeah, show. Yeah. Who's the coach of your uh, Real Salt Lake team? Because we got a guy that's Tony Miola. He yeah. should be. Yeah, you need to hire Tony Miola. Consideration. Well. Um, They're in the playoffs. I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. The playoffs, and if bro. they don't win the whole thing, <laughs> Tony Miola is your guy. Yeah, so, I mean, this guy's going to put but, a good pitch hey, together here if we get a hold of him. Hey, but the the – the Real going into penalties, winning in penalties the other night. The best. It's inc- is that against Atlanta? Incredible. It is incredible. We're playing Houston. No. That's the three. You're playing Houston right now oh, still. That's the three. Because then he go perfect. Somebody went perfect. I watched it. Uh, we did. Goalie made one save. That was you guys? Yeah, and the goalie made a save. The first save. Yeah, made the first save. And, and then, then we perfect. went perfect. And it, I mean, a couple of them were up high. Yeah, they went Where you're it. like, uh, that's the one that's like, okay, this is going to fly up over. And mm-hmm. like, uh, we're perfect. So uh, are you going to try to get messy on your team or what? Smart. I think he's already taken. No, you could trade, right? Yeah, you just yeah, talk trade, right? yeah. Right. No, I mean, no, no. I think you just have to trade nice. like a few mountains, I think. Yeah, we'd, yeah. Have to, we'd have to do that. We'd have to bring in another TV deal. to. Yeah. Get Joining us now is a man who maybe is coach of uh, the future United States soccer team <laughs> and maybe Real Salt Lake. League. I mean, we have no idea. Ladies and gentlemen, soccer royalty, Tony Miola. Yeah, Tony! 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 Tony. Tony. This guy, o- this guy owns Real Salt Lake. What do we need to know about his team? Are we going to get a big time win over Houston here in the playoffs? Or are going to win it all? Uh, they they need one down in Houston, don't they? They uh, they did a good job uh, a couple nights ago, and now they're playing a really good Houston side. Yeah, but I was uh, I was just on the radio. He'll know Brian Dunseth, my yeah, radio for partner. Sure, man. Curious, lives in Salt Lake and. Uh, he picked Salt Lake to go through, so uh, hopefully he's right. Uh, Tony, you think anybody's going to uh, like really care about this championship because oh. Messi isn't playing in it? Is that something we should have got that figured out? Don't we think, Tony? Don't, don't we think we should have got Messi in there? I, I think it got figured out just the way it's supposed to get figured out, my man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'll care about it. Look, it's an MLS Cup. Uh, Amen. Sorry, man, you caught me on the bike right here. So, um, <laughs> Dude, you're pulling I, people I, off right. the I, I had the New England game tonight, um, New England against uh, Philly game, so I was just getting the bike ride. Philly doesn't it. stand. What Revolution. time? What time? What time? Where at? Uh, 7.30 Fox. All right, let's nice. go. Have a good one tonight, Tony. Tell Brian Tony. what's up for right. me. Tell Brian what's yeah, up. Go Reds. That guy could be your coach. He's on Peloton middle of the day. He's got yeah, game. Peloton. You guys are pulling him off the Peloton. Only keyboard. time I've ever talked to him is just cold calling him in the middle of the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never met him in real life. Well, I mean, who else are we going to die? We're dialing for dollars here. You, let's go to your phone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go Adam Silver. Let's go Adam Silver. Hey, let's call MJ. No. Yeah, how's that? Steve yeah, Young. You are a golfer, though. Kyle I, talks am, about. I am a golfer. That's what your hobby is. I play golf. Oh. That's how Danny and I know each other. It's how I got to know Dwayne. Like, golf is an incredible sport. It's how you. I mean, it's incredible the people that you can meet and you get to spend time with that you would never normally be able to spend four or five hours with, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah, like, good business they say out on the golf course. Sounds like it has done you very well. It's it's first of all, it's my yoga because when you're playing golf, you can't think about anything else. And so, if I look well, back at my career, it's like when I go play golf, it was like wow, I just totally thought about nothing for three hours. Mm-hmm. You got to focus on that little ball, and then you're also outside. It's a good time. Love it. And then you're with people. And so it's like a triple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the three things. It's you like, love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. And you can never beat it. Sure. You can never master it. What's I'm going to go hit a hole in one. I'm like a two. You're going to you're, you're about to say something yeah, about Yeah, we're going to go hit a hole in one out back. I saw him coming in. Foxy hit one on the 75 yard hole in one. I think it only took him like 562 balls. Yeah, it was a lot yeah. of balls, about three or four weeks worth every single day. And you're just going to come out here one. You think you can handle I, these Indiana wins? You're going to nope. have to matter. I saw Dwayne hit a hole in one. On Pebble Beach, on number seven. Oh, yeah. and I was like, yeah, yeah. how in the world? I've probably, I've teed up there so many times trying to hit. That's so cool, by the way. So, oh, my God. God. He gets so a cool. hole in one on number seven at Pebble. Like, that is insane. Dream. I was like, there's no way. That's real. And yeah. sure enough. Did you ever play with Michael Jordan? I have. How'd that go? Is that how we He's bought competitive. the jazz? He's competitive. Yeah. He's competitive. Is that how we bought the jazz? No, it's not how we bought the jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Are you upset that he's gone? That he's out of the league? Oh man, a little bit, yeah, for sure. I, I'd, I'd lie if, if I, if I, wasn't saying I was. Like he, he's actually super helpful in having the goat sit there. Yeah, hell yeah. And just look across and be like, wow, this is, this is cool. And when he speaks, it matters. And, um, yeah, I would lie. I told him. Mm, before, like, man, that sucks that you're going. But I also get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's tough not to get. And also, like, 100000 in the stroke. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't get in that. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's I don't know. more like JJ. That's like JJ. That's yeah. like JJF my money. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. damn right. Yeah. He's, throwing, he's throwing them That's around. That's Boo Ray. Hey, which is game. I don't know if you've ever played. To stay away yeah, from I it. Stay, 